Scene four from Five Days in March by Toshiki Okada. This is a separate story, but uh, this story, well, takes place after more than 31 hours have passed, and the war had actually started. There's this woman named Yuki, and on March 20th, she was, uh, um, so the <laughs> war in Iraq began on March 20th, but at the moment, I had some errands to run down at Shinokita, so I was by nearby Shibuya Station, a little bit in front of the turnstiles for the Ino Kashiro line, but at that moment, there was like, from, from the station, you can see that building with the, the glass facade, right? From there, what is it? There was a huge swelling noise coming from there. Like, what is that noise was coming from there? And it turned out to be a protest, but I was just watching from there. But uh, around that time, right around that time, uh, there were tons of marches in places like Shibuya, like pretty frequently. And this Yuki was, uh, during that whole time in that area, she was uh, staying <laughs> at a fancy hourly hotel near Dogenzaka in Shibuya for, uh, uh, for five days straight. But um, now, now we're going to do this story about how Minobe woke up in the morning and there was some woman he'd never seen before but from the point of view of a woman named Yuki. At the beginning, like on the first day and stuff, it was right after we met, right? So we <laughs> totally had sex like a bunch of times without any rest between, maybe just talk a little and then right away, next round kind of. But after about three times, you know, he gets tired, right? And he just falls asleep. So I think, like, maybe I'll sleep too then. So I go to sleep, right? And about two hours go by, right? Even though, really, I don't know if it's been two hours or what, but you know the rooms in those places, they don't have windows. So when you wake up in, in, in those kinds of places, you can't tell at all. But then, like, he woke up, and then he, like, started touching me, or, you know, so I woke up. And as we kind of kept groping each other, it's kind of like another round of like, so this kept going for two whole days. But after a while, I couldn't tell anymore what time it was, um, which day, and one of those moments. I mean, I had a watch, but I hadn't looked at it. Like, it's not looking at it on purpose. Like, aren't there times you think you just want to be surprised? Oh, it's uh, only the second day? I thought it was already about the fourth day. Yeah. And it was like totally a time warp. After we did it, we taught, right? Looking at the ceiling, right? And then it'd be after the second or like third time. Oh, no way. <laughs> it was totally more. It was like after the 10th time. <laughs> But, and this was, <laughs> this was totally hysterical. He, he said, like, a while ago, we, you know, the first time, he said, like, we got carried away and didn't use anything, huh? He said, and do you think it's okay? Like, he says this after all this time. And I thought it was pretty hysterical, but <laughs> okay. Is he talking about STDs or babies? It turned out to be babies, but... Um, We've done it easily more than 10 times, and not only have we never used anything any of those times, but, right, you know, how those places are, they only have two condoms. They only have two. And of course, if you want, you can pay additional for more, but anyway, the only home was two, right, you know, and that's the convention, and, but it's like, why is it two? <laughs> we have some data about the national average being two. <laughs> Or two, or no, but twice. <laughs> yeah, those kinds of places. I mean, if you buy additional ones, they're probably expensive. The uh, Matsukiyu Pharmacy would definitely be better. We agreed on that. So we did it two more times using the guy that the guys that came in the room, which 
that itself is also pretty hysterical. But, and then we went outside once, and uh, when we asked the person at the hotel, we want to leave and come right back, they were like, that's fine. <laughs> so it was totally okay. And I thought it wouldn't be okay, but apparently it was fine. Oh, really? Then let's go outside. And we went out, and when we looked at the time, it was the morning of the third day. Like 10 o'clock or something? <laughs> really, I thought it'd be around the evening of the second day. But then when I said that, he was also thinking, oh, I was thinking it was about that too. And I was saying like, oh, I'm, I, you know how once in a while it's not at all the time you thought it was? I really love that. And he was thinking, oh, really? And said, like, it's kind of right, like a time warp, which makes me pretty happy. And she was thinking, oh, really? And then first off, we went shopping at Matsukiyo and, and bought about three dozen. But it was pretty unlikely by that time for us to use up all three dozen. <laughs> totally like in the end, during the second half, our pace totally fell off and then, right, we were like, wait a second, have we gone through two whole days without eating anything? And then we were kind of like, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. I mean, I, like, aren't we really just a couple of beasts? Which totally cracked us up. And then when we were like, what should we eat? And in Shibuya on weekdays, you know, you, you see a lot of those um, uh, lunch buffets places when you're in Shibuya during the work day. We were like, let's go to some place like that and stuff our faces so that we can prepare to fuck our brains out when we get back to the hotel because we are so-called beasts after all. <laughs> but it was pretty unlikely by that time for us to use up all our three dozen. Like in the end, during the second half, the pace totally fell off. But we did use up two dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Yuki. <laughs> And her then boyfriend, well, this guy in Yuki, had mutually agreed that they'd be together for five days only. And the two kind of decided that they were going to stick to this restriction. And they spent five days in March together in Shibuya, in this love hotel, but they were really absolutely strict about limiting their flame to those five days. And beyond that, they apparently didn't even exchange addresses or phone numbers or email addresses with each other, but the decision to do this hadn't been made at this point. It wasn't until later on this day when they got back to the hotel that they were gonna do this, but like they're gonna go into detail about that a little later. But like, <laughs> I don't know what the two of them were thinking at this point exactly, but like, Probably they weren't thinking much at all. <laughs> <laughs> then this Yuki went with the guy to this 950 yen Indian food buffet they have on Center Street. <laughs> and she was like, oh, it's a little pricey, but whatever. And totally stuffed her face. <laughs> and she ordered a lassie to boot which cost extra 250 yen to boot, and she gave him a sip. And the reason why, even though she was like, well, it's pricey, but maybe it's all right, was that she was also really kind of having fun and was thinking, does it feel like we're on a trip? Like, even though it's just Shibuya, is it fun? Like, does it feel like we're in a foreign country? And I feel like we're sightseeing somehow it's so much fun. I was thinking, I mean, here we are in Shibuya, but it doesn't feel like Shibuya. Seriously, this is <coughs> such a blast. And then it felt like we were playing into that feeling of it being Shibuya, but not Shibuya. Like, for instance, not leaving the restaurant until we'd eaten so much that it was like, we can't possibly eat anymore. <laughs> and then, we heard this um, crazy mounting noise coming from toward the Shibuya Scramble intersection, 
we, we heard a noise that made us go like, what the hell? And we were like, oh, look at the protest. And we pulled each other by the hand to get closer and the protest was pretty packed. Oh, and the impact of being in the middle of it live was pretty raw, I thought. But and, and, and they were like, oh, yeah, what about the war? And, and, and when, the, when the huge vision screen on the Tsutaya building was showing the headlines about how the cruise missile airstrike on Baghdad had started, and they were like, oh, it started, after all. And, and watched the march and stuff for a little bit, and pretty much headed right back to the hotel. But anyway, we're going to do a little bit from the march. Mm-hmm. <laughs>